Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, we have the World Finals Games here. Of course, I saw this in person already. Most of you guys should have saw it already, but this is like a breakdown to give you guys my thoughts on all of the drafts, how the guys played, and who should have really come out on top in the end. So, we've got the first game here, uh, well, the first set. We have Knockout and the Open, and to be honest, like, it was just a crazy event, and a lot of things I just probably overlooked or, I don't know, kind of forgot about, so it's good to really re-look re at it for the very first time and see how things are. So we have Out in the Open, we have Meg, RT, and Gene Band on the side of STMN, and then we have Charlie, Meg, and the last band that you can't see covered by my fat head is Piper. So, uh, Bobby picks Nanny first pick which is pretty decent Lanny really strong into everything pretty interesting how the meta's evolved on it out in the open to be honest because normally Meg you could pretty much go all of the times but I think pros quickly deciphered that you know Meg is like the best brawler when it comes down to knockout the main reason being is because it just takes so long to kill her it literally as a piper it can take like six seven shots just to kill Meg completely so of course survivability she's like the number one so that's why you see her band out quite a lot you also see the Eve 8 bit coming in from Zeta. So, in terms of composition, of course, out in the open, Eve, you can never go wrong with, right? She's just solid, uh, pretty good into everything. There's not really many brothers that hard counter Eve on this map. So, you're pretty much always certain to get some value out of her. And then we see 8 bit as a mid on out in the open, which, you know, 8 bit into a nanny isn't really the best. Again, I don't know their thinking completely. So, I can't really say why they did that. But, you know, maybe they're scared of something a little bit aggro from Estimen. That would be my biggest guess. But then Estimen answered with Bell and uh, a Tick. So that is a very good reply because Nanny's very good against 8-bit. Bell's very good against 8-bit. Specifically, when it, he gets the turret down, you know, it can ricochet against the turret and onto him. And also, of course, Bell's mark is going to get a lot of value out of a high HP brawler. So I really like the Bell pick. And then the Tick as well. Really underrated on out in the open, but just so good at forcing the enemy is back and then now he goes with sprout last pick so i guess sprout is very well it should be very good against that composition you know sprout can pretty much free four tap all of the enemy composition there's no aggro brawler or yeah literally nothing that can go aggressive on the side of stmn so a pretty safe pick overall in terms of draft though i like stmn's definitely just literally for the fact that i don't really agree with a bit too much on knock knockout like i've seen it as well before on this map i've seen a few teams draft like lou for example like I guess lose super can push the enemies back really far, but I just don't like it. There's just safer brothers to go, really. And we see here already Zor 72 HP. That could have been dangerously scary here. But you see Meow just pushing up straight away. I guess it is pretty easy to push into a tick. And especially on this map, you want complete positioning as quickly as possible. Because if you can keep the enemies all the way back and behind those walls, if they're not broken up, well, they're broken up now. It's just easy to spawn trap and then the gas can close in and then you can just get free kills pretty easily. So that was a fantastic return to sender from Sands. He blocks a shot and then Zor finishes it off really well. So I know that I say a lot of the time that Tick is a super easy brawler to play, but sometimes against the pros, it can be pretty hard. But I think Zor just seems to play Tick so incredibly well. It reminds me of Tom, the way he forces uh, players into certain positions and just makes it a lot easier for his other teammates to pinch him down. You'll notice it quite a lot with Zor. Also, one thing I noted straight away when I was watching is that Zal was using, I believe, vision gear on uh, the tick, which is pretty wild. I don't know why you would need vision gear, uh, considering he's mainly shooting down the left-hand side, but... You know, um, I might have to try it out. I thought shield gear was just to go to every single time. Uh, but yeah, uh, we see already now we're going pretty weak. So, I mean, maybe it's okay just because he has so much HP. It does take um, SDMN a long time to get him down. You see here now, uh, SDMN have the good positioning, especially with a tick constantly spamming the choke point. It's going to be really hard for them to push out. They're just feeding him unlimited tick heads, so it's going to be really hard for them. Bobby's got positioning right here. Meow does have a wall to use. Another nanny peep coming in, which does unfortunately miss out Meow. We see the hatching is coming in. I don't think he's using quadruplets as well, which is fair enough. Uh, Zor getting some really good taps onto Meow as well. A bit torrent down, going down straight away. Unfortunately, there's a wall in the way, so now we can't get down that tick. Head. some good shots onto Meow. he's going to get taken down bobby with some really good position able to just ignore jero and go straight for eight bit so that's a very convincing first game best for scmn and for me 
it was pretty obvious by the draft. Okay, so going into the next round then. So that was pretty fast from STM men. You know, they've came off the back of a really good win. 3-0 versus SK. So I think normally in the esports world, well, actually, Zor goes down really fast. Took a great kill from Meow there. But as I say, normally in the esports, when someone comes to back of a win and they play the next game, they have a little bit of an advantage because they're just going off like... I don't know what the word for it. Momentum, that's the word I'm looking for. There's momentum's on their side and they're able to just come out the gate swinging. But unfortunately, if they do lose this one right here, there's no way that they uh, Sans can actually get anything. I mean, this position, he's just trying not to feed the 8-bit to it, I guess. That's probably the most vital super you don't want to feed. And he's trying to get his super himself. So, all in all, good from Zeta overall. You see again that... Um, Oh, we're just so good at positioning. Like, that's normally the number one thing that just like, like a lot of people will talk about aim. Like I guess aim is very important, but a lot of the time it actually is just jukes getting into the opponent's faces, into the spawn because positioning can easily win games by themselves. So Zark goes for the trick on the launch pad, and that is just an insane take head, able to get him down. I guess Meow just wasn't expecting it. I don't know. I, I feel like I know that trick. I've known it for a while, but I guess he was just in a really bad position and Sprout just can't take that tick head down whatsoever it's like one of the biggest counters to him so well played from Zart overall as soon as you get one killer knockout as always it's just pretty much a round win like it's very very rare you see a turnaround unless it's Yoshi against Tribe which he got a 1v3 so fair enough <laughs> to hit him uh, but it's him and able to take this next uh, game right here and be able to tie things up and you know one literally one round away from taking the first set which will be very good for them they just want to get as much momentum as possible but normally it's the opposite opposite for sdmn because normally it takes them a while to get going they end up losing the first set i think a few times i think i've seen heard a statistic in the world finals i can't remember but i just know that normally it takes them a little bit of a while to get going but when they do they just end up sweeping teams they're just so incredibly strong once momentum is on their side and we get a bit of confidence so again zeta have the early position especially with those sprout walls or just being able to pinch a lot easier i think in this type of map it's just easy to get damage with a sprout rather than a tick another nanny peep is coming in here and especially with that 8-bit marked a great tp from 8-bit i'm not too sure where the head went because the uh, camera angle is all the way at the bottom. Not too sure why, but I guess it didn't really hit anyone. Some good taps by Sanzo. Unfortunately, misses a nanny head right there. But it doesn't really matter because that Naoi mark is going to be very clutch. And look at that. That was insane. He nearly had full HP on one uh, one nanny hit and a tick hit, I think. Literally nearly deleted him. And that's uh, Meow going down as well. You see that matchup all of the time. Zor is just winning the throw versus throw interaction in every single time. I think Meow was just going a little bit too aggressive, maybe nerves were kicking in a little bit. But SD Men take the first set very convincingly. I really like their chances after that set win. So now jumping into the second set, we have Hard Rock Mine Gem Grab. So we have Buster, Rico, and Rosa banned from SD Men. And then Ruff, Sandy, and Charlie. So Charlie had a 100% ban rate. I think that is the most banned brawler ever in Brawl Esports history, which is kind of crazy. Crazy. I think she'll be getting an emergency nerf soon. What do you guys think? But yeah, hold up, man. I forgot how this set went. I think I was too busy talking a lot of the time throughout this game. So it'd be interesting to rewatch this back and really focus up on how the gameplay kind of went. So Mr. P first pick. That is very interesting. I know stamina more than most teams really value the Mr. P pick. I think it just counters a lot of brawlers on certain maps. So, you know, them first picking it, they're just very, very comfortable. Especially getting rid of Buster and Rosa. They are two of the biggest aggro brawlers you could possibly go against Mr. P on this map. So I guess they're just not really scared of those aggro uh, brawlers in terms of the next pick okay Stu so this has typically been Zeta's downfall I've seen it a few times I believe or just throughout world finals where teams have drafted Stu into a Mr. P I guess Stu can just get value elsewhere but it's actually one of the biggest counters and it can just be so annoying it wastes so much of your ammo yeah I don't know how to really feel about that but then they go with a Cordelia so this is the brawler which I've been raving about for weeks now saying just how strong he is and pros just don't seem to ban him out Cordelius can always just get value into every single matchup he can just make that turnaround play pretty easily with all of his jump gadgets he, of course he's got his super as well that you can use it on a gem carrier get the kill you know that's literally a big clutch moment and we've seen Meow on Cordelius pretty much all world finals been popping 
off against Crazy Raccoon, against all of these other teams. So, Meow on here on Cordelia's got to be one of the scariest things to face off against. So, Bobby goes with the Lou, which has been working pretty much all World Finals long. Lou is just so broken at the moment with his hypercharge. You know, he could be struggling all game, but then it just takes one hypercharge for Lou to throw it onto the gem carrier and then to cycle another super and throw it onto someone else. It can literally just be so game changing. I, it is so broken and the fact that it, two supers can cover like the majority of the spawn i think that's the most broken thing about it and then of course 8 bit 8 bit's just been running rampant on the meta at the moment he's been seen everywhere you know loot 8 bit covers their tracks in terms of any aggro picks and then mr p is just pretty good again i mean he's okay against cordelis but very strong against Stu. so i uh, completely forgot i think okay they go with a piper so i guess that's a pretty good pick because piper's Good against uh, 8-Bit. Well, decent, I'll say. She definitely has a bit of a matchup against 8-Bit. Definitely has matchup against Lou if she can ever get into that mid-engagement. And then Mr. P, I mean, isn't really the worst for Piper, I would say, because at least you've got um, the star power. I forgot what it's called off the top of my head. However, I forgot that star power. You know what I mean. The one that gives you snappy sniping. That gives you the extra ammo when you shoot the porters. So it doesn't really hurt her the most here. So in terms of draft... I don't know how to feel about this. I think Zeta probably have draft a little bit, I would say, just because Lou doesn't really have any comfortable matchups. Like, you take a look at all of his compos, well, all the brawlers on the enemy side. You know, Stu literally hard counters Lou. You've got Cordelius, who has good movement as well. So those two brawlers straight away that counter Lou. And, of course, Piper can just keep Lou back. So it's all, I think, all for me is just about whether Bobby can survive these good matchups. And he has his super, which, fair enough, is normally really hard. So if you can get a couple more supers, it's going to be very good for him. Meow already gets Sans into the Shadow Realm. You can see here, just by how aggro he can be, his quick movement speed, you know, Mr. P hates that. He hates fast movement brawlers, so it's going to be very hard for him. We can see now he's winning that matchup here. It's going to be very important. If you can get yourself into the enemy bushes, you can waste a lot of time and allow the gem carry in Jero just to jump out and collect six gems already. So great takedown from Bobby. He already has has his hypercharge in hand which is going to be very clutch pretty soon and we see here zon you know ebs normally use boosted booster but just because he has a pretty bad matchup against piper uh you know he's going to be using that to try and stay alive meow with another really clutch super like i told you this guy on cordelius is just absolutely insane there's nothing that really lou can do in a 1v1 Meow can dodge in and out and just spam his attack so much faster than a lou can you know the input i don't know what it's called like the shot delay on Meow on uh, Cordelius is just so fast. Uh, there's like no delay, sorry. So you're able just to get so many attacks off really quickly. So that's why he's just so strong at the moment. He picks up the healing mushrooms as well. And he can just juke his way around the 8-bit. And at the moment, it's just a Meow show. He's able just to get so much aggression. And it's just so easy for them. So for me, it is pretty clear that Zeta do have the draft here. I know a lot of times you guys want to see the gameplay. But right now, I think in terms of how competitive it is, there's just not much split in terms of skill gap. So yeah. States are looking very strong. Now we have the next game of this set. So again here, I think it all just depends on whether Bobby can get a good hypercharge super and try and change the game because it is pretty hard for them. I you know I think for sure that Mr. P has to get onto the stew that's going to be your best chance of winning but if Stu can just run into the grass like this it's just constant pressure and it's just going to be pretty easy for Jero to walk up again and get some gems pops the gadget here gets the kill onto Zar and just look at that he just gets his six gem lead just like that just by some great co coordination from Zeta a great wall break as well and things just couldn't go any more perfect for Zeta so far so again Meow goes down but he's got his super to hand already but now he just on the stew is disgusting like this guy on the stew all year long has been doing wonders and he's able just to dodge in and out just create so much pressure and that's nine gems already for Zeta I don't remember this going so quickly and he's able to dash out with the gem as well so I think I was being a little bit nicer in terms of how I'd rate the drafts because this clearly is just a, such a big mismatch like stamina would not be losing this hard if it weren't for the drafts so for me yeah definitely have to improve things mr p first but clearly clearly not it so that's going to be one one in sets let's hop into the next one all right guys jumping into set number three then so i completely forgot about the technical difficulties in this one i'm not sure what went down but essentially i think the game glitched for stmn or something because surge was picked and obviously you wouldn't want to go surge on split anymore 
he wasn't picked any any time at all so we have cordelius charlie and chuck band for estimen and then we have colette Maisie and shelly so some good bands overall we've seen a lot of Maisie at the moment but this is where things i think uh, would probably go wrong for stamina because they allowed rosa to slip through lou and rosa two of the best brawlers when it comes down to hot zone it's so hard to kill them i know they have a gale which is pretty good against rosa uh but i just i don't really know barley can be pretty good as well gray rosa lou that is such a solid composition from zeta overall i don't know how they got three of those brawlers all together uh but they did I guess maybe Stamina was waiting for maybe the roofs on the side of the, uh, Zeta because they went with a Barley. But then they go with a last pick Spike. So I guess Spike, yeah, Spike has a pretty good matchup into all of these. But does he have the reload to really keep up with Rosa? Keep coming in over and over again. Not too sure, but at least he's got the hypercharge. For me, again, I would, I would side for Zeta. I would really side for Zeta on this one just because of the Rosa. The Rosa has just been running wild. And I mean wild. In terms of competitive people kept doubting rosa over and over again and i've been saying for months she's like one of the best brawlers in the game if not the best you know excluding charlie she's so polarizing you've always got to watch out for her and especially since the hypercharge it, it's just been exemplified it's just so hard to take her down it, it normally it needs two people to take her down every single time so she just gets pinched out right here i guess with Nawi, he knows probably that he's going to lose a lot of uh well he's going to lose a 1v2 so he's just trying to build up his super as quickly as possible so probably just cycling in a death pretty quickly there just get another bushes in gerald does use a walking cane does miss that one so i guess he's just going to try and break open the walls to more walls he can break open the better it's going to be to counter out the barley and it's actually pretty hard to get your super against the spikes so i guess he's going to again try and go for the walking cane does miss onto bobby and that's two guns so unless he's using um the fourth gadget gear then he's not going to have any of those left that can be very worrisome i remember talking about this whilst the games were going on gerald does get a kill onto zarvo and does get a wall break onto barley so that is very very crucial look how open the area is now like i know normally you don't want to open the map up on that left hand side because there's only small kind of choke point to walk through but against the barley just opening it up no matter what it's always going to be more beneficial jared now has super eventually and gets to take down onto bobby which is going to be a free kill every single time things could have gone very different there if you didn't get that walking cane he weren't going to be able to charge his super in time and things could have been very bad for him just use another super which i guess was good to get some aggro in but at the same time I like it normally when greys just leave a good teleport into the zone but again now he's just been staying in that zone consistent i've not even been speaking about it but he's been doing his bit on the right hand side meow with the super does get the connection onto sans and this is where the communication will come in he's literally fully frozen and going to get frozen even more by the ice rink and there's just no way you can even touch a rosa when she's got the hypercharged shield there's just nothing you can do now he pops another super which is actually a very clever play look at that waste so much time and now that allows meow to push in and gerald can just get a final few percentages so zeta looking really hot in this one okay so jumping into the next game then so Again, they just really need to deal with that Rosa a little bit better. I know once she gets her super, it's very hard for a Gale because he just doesn't actually charge his super fast enough, like which is crazy because normally a Gale would uh, deal with that a little bit better. Also, I remember a little bit off topic, but I remember Sans in the after party. He, he was um, pretty angry at some of the drafts here. Like, I don't want to ruin things, but he would have preferred instead of the spike, a roofs, I believe. Like, he really wanted a roofs against that Rosa. Like, I know that's less DPS, but I guess that probably just opens up and destroys the bushes, which I think is the number one concern here. Like, having the bushes is just so annoying for uh, the players to deal with. You can see here, just look at the spam and just look at Rosa just being able to run straight into Gale and take him down. And now he's got position in the grass. It's going to be very hard uh, for Stamina to really do too much of course the left hand zone has been taken pretty well and that hypercharge is just pretty much gg from there and he's going to cycle another one just in time and somehow he's getting some shots off in a minute like now he's going crazy on this rosa meow's able to just sneak in right here zal's got a hypercharge super which is not going to use just yet meow's just going to slowly get some percentages so i feel like uh, sdmn should have probably dealt with that a lot quicker 
But now they're able to get onto the left-hand side here. Bobby does survive, but still the percentage lead is going to go the way of Zeta overall here. Good super from Zoe. He's able to get the loot back. Now the percentage is going on the side of Stamina. So uh, Zeta needs to act fast or else they could be in a bad situation right here. Jaro uses super onto Sans. Does nearly get the takedown. A lot of percentage is going down here, but now he's going to come in and clean. The double stun onto them is absolutely insane. But that's going to be a good healing gadget. And now Stamina should be able to close things off. 5%. They should just be able to just keep forcing himself on the left hand side and they're going to be forced to defend pretty much all the time a good hype charge super from Zor. it's going to allow him to walk in that's going to be the takedown and that's going to be the win on the side of stamina so really close game here okay so jumping into the third game of this set then so this could be very very crucial on who wins world finals to be 2-1 up in this scenario is huge because of course doing the math you just need to win one of the next two sets which course it's going to be very beneficial you just need to close it out with one more set so the the stakes can be higher in this moment but jero does get an important wall break there and charge his super allows me out to push in now he's going to actually put a more aggressive bush this time i guess just to be a little bit more annoying in that scenario does actually get twisted again meow somehow gets super here pushing czar all the way back but it's still pretty decent for both teams so far. Jero doesn't have super, so that's going to be working in the side of Stamina's uh, favor. Does miss another walking cane here. Oh, that was that was unfortunate. I don't know how the shot hit there, but that, that could change the course of the game there. Giving the super to Gray, it's going to allow him to get a really good TP into the zone and out onto the, like, literally TP onto one zone to the other. Just look at that. That's just so, so overpowered. And then you're able to just teleport out, heal up. And then now we just heal up and then go back into the zone again. It's just hard for them to really do too much. We just can't keep up with uh, the, the Roses. So much HP. There's just not enough reload speed. There's just not a tank counter really in there to deal with Rosa. And that's another stun onto him. And it's just looking so terrible for stamina at the moment. The finest of margins. They're just able to recycle spawns over and over again. Rosa's just able to just walk in and just look about the healing with uh, the star power. It's just way too much for them. Charges another super. And that is literally over. So Zeta just dominating in that final game. They looked so good. Okay, so jumping into set number four here. Potentially set point for Zeta. They could win the worlds right here at well set point world's point what am i talking about uh, in terms of the draft then we have dynamite cordelius and a luband from the side of st men and then we have colette chuck and charlie so looking at the world finals by the way it's just good to see what's good in power league what's good in the meta overall of course let me know if you made it this far and let me know down in the comment section below what videos you want to see in terms of you know what i've learned from the world finals i feel like i've learned a lot and i feel like i'm a lot more motivated to play power league and learn from the pros but of course probably it's due for some balance changes hashtag charlie way too strong but talking of hashtags we have ems here so ems hasn't really been played too much i i feel like when you play her on ladder she's just good into everything but in competitive i think too many brawlers outrange her kind of and just do her job a little bit better so that's why she's kind of fell off i don't really see her in many scenarios to be honest so a little bit weird to see that because i always consider ems like an a tier brawler but just judging off world finals she probably would be like c tier b tier to be honest so roofs is being drafted from zeta so i guess the map's going to be broken up a lot with the colt with roofs so this could be pretty uh difficult if there's going to be any tanks for example because everything's opened up it's not going to really, really be the best so again i'm a little bit um but not really confused but it's pretty weird to see how the meta changes because before a few weeks ago maybe two three weeks ago bull was being like first picked on hot potato all the time because of that hypercharge and now it's just so anti-tank it's just crazy how the meta evolves every single week and that's why some of you guys are always confused when you know one week i say the one brawler's op and then another one it's just how the meta evolves it's crazy with so many brawlers it's always pretty volatile but anyways they draft the spike and the barley which to be honest i didn't really like i called it uh straight away that i don't like this composition because you have the colt and then you have barley which is very counterintuitive you know you want to break open them up with colt but then with barley you want every single wall open as much as possible and this egg got pick is wild everyone went wild watching it in the arena and i knew it was going to be a good um of course a good matchup for edgar 
if they go in Egor, they, you know, it's Zeta. They, they know their matchups pretty well. And the reason why Egor's so good is because, you know, Egor's always been good against Barley. And it's really strong against Colt as well. I would say that Spike can definitely kill Egor, even though he's squishy. He, he deals a lot of damage. But it's just a free matchup onto the other two squishy brawlers. And especially when he uses hard landing, he just gets the free kill every single time. So, you see here, he's already got his super. He's going to be flashing it and trying to get a kill onto Colt. Yeah, it's just unwinnable for Colt. No way he's going to be able to win that if Egor just jumps straight onto him. And straight away, I was saying, like, now people are just going to go crazy. If Egor wins this, they're, they're going to be asking for nerfs and everything. I'm saying, oh, he's so underrated, blah, blah, blah. But he's always been... His best game mode is by far Heist because there's a lot of good matchups for him. But other than that, he's not really got a lot of good matchups. But by the way, Chero's surviving there with the damage gear activated. It, it's unfortunate for Sans, right? Because... Literally the smallest of margins, a few missed shots, and got Jero got like an extra 15%. And that could literally be so costly. So again, Jero has super, which now they're losing by percentages. So they just can't leave Edgar at all. You can't leave Edgar alone on the safe. But as long as you've got someone close by you, you can always get the trade. You see right here, good gadget from Bobby. Great hypercharge from Zar. Able to get that pretty quickly, and they're able to get some swift takedowns. So now the map's been opened up a lot more. Jero jumps onto the spike, which... I guess it was okay because we need to get the barley out, but at the same time, you know, Spike just deletes them. And now the percentage is clawing back for STM men. Another wall break from roofs, and things are just so open. It's going to be pretty tough. It's really relying on Spike and Colt to really do a lot. Jero walks in here. Not too sure why Meow didn't follow up straight away with the damage, but does get some good shots anyway. I guess he just didn't really want to let Barley through, but he's through anyway. Bobby's able to get a lot of damage. Unfortunately for him, Meow just clips him enough to take him down, but now Colt can start getting a little bit of damage onto the safe. Another spike super, and this is such a messy game. Of course, when you have Edgar in the game, things are just going to be crazy. Heist has always been pretty base race since the hypercharges, and of course, Stamina have two, and Zeta have zero. So, you know, just in that category, they, they can get a lot more damage so damage gear activated sans able to get a super onto safe gets a clip onto meow as well which is just absolutely insane so redeeming himself a little bit for a little bit of a mistake at the beginning and they're able to close things off in the end so i'm unsure how that just was able to kind of fester into that but they're able to clutch up in the end so now we have the next round right here so stamina just need that one to take it to the fifth and final set Jero goes for a very aggressive play here. And this is much better from Meow. He's able to just get into the faces, get that collateral damage going through, of course, the stamina player and the high safe, getting that value, getting that supercharged up already. And this is what I'm talking about. Just look at that going straight in. And I was saying straight away, the Meow M's is dangerous. Oh, yeah, he's been going M's, M's, M's so much. He's perfected that brawler. So you can't give, you know, some of the best players in the world their mains, right? So he's able to just get so much pressure as well. As long as the grass is there, he's able to get a lot of value out of speed gain. Gets Sands down again, which is just absolutely insane. 40% already on the side of Zeta. I just love how they, they're just able to claim so much of the map. And again, Gerald jumps in here. Getting so much percentages. His teammates always seem to follow up every single time. And I, I just love this communication from Zeta every single time. So now he's just going to try and get as much damage as possible. And somehow he's able to stay alive so well. He does that so well. Wastes so much time. Gets so much percentages. Meow gets taken down. This is still very winnable for Stamina. There's only 10% left. And they can't allow Edgar to jump in at any point. But if they can keep getting a few kills, they can keep chipping down the save. There's 45% in it. Doesn't seem like they can, but they seriously can with hypercharges as well. If they get a couple of kills, they can just delete the save pretty quickly. So uh, now it does a really good job, though, getting down the left-hand side. And now they're all the way pu pushed back, but they need to get someone down quickly because slowly Zeta are advancing up the map. Jero's going to get really weak here. Meow's able to just wiggle his way in, and he's going to finish it off right there. So I feel like Zor could have maybe supered it a little bit quicker, but now we have this uh, scenario where... Zeta are on match points, so this is super sketchy for them. We're going to be skipping through that little intermission bit and get straight into this next game. So, literally world finals point right here. Meow gets taken down. Jero with some really good flank damage, already getting 13%, but all of it adds up. Bobby doing a much better job this time around. Unfortunately, gets hit by the Ruff's rocket, but he's able just to get some percentages. Of course, he doesn't want to be on that egg goal matchup at all. Jero just uses super here. Doesn't get any super cycle, though. 
but it gets the takedown, which of course is the most important thing. But this is really good from Zor using the gadget of a super onto Jero and a super from Sans, which with the damage get activated, is looking so good for stamina at the moment. But leaving Jero with that Ruff's super on the safe is disastrous. Somehow, Naoi and Meow were able to clean things up, and now they can start to go on their counter attack. This is looking very bad for stamina now. We've only like 20% each for each team. Neither team can allow anyone to go through and deal damage to the safe, or else it's over. Sans unfortunately oversteps his mark, and Ems is just so good at pressurizing. But now everyone onto the safe here, and they're able to finish things off. <sighs> I mean, I was heartbroken for the guys and stamina. Like, I've literally got chills on my neck. As soon as I watched that, I got chills because it just reminded me of God. I didn't want to mention it, but like, like finishing it on heist, I think I've seen. Zeta get worlds on heist I think before a few years ago of course I won it on heist as well it is kind of crazy but just look look at Zeta they weren't even celebrating I guess they were kind of just in shock in the end but you know probably other teams would have gone crazy and uh I don't even know what they would have done but yeah they just went really too happy with things but anyways they're nice guys you know everyone was memeing I'm calling them NPCs and robots but seriously they deserved it they they tried all year, they dominated in the EU, and they, they defeated Crazy Raccoon. That in itself is worthy of world champions. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Absolutely wild world finals. I think that was my favorite one so far, just because we saw a different winner rather than Crazy Raccoon. And of course, EU, I'm happy. Like Even though I wanted Stamina to win because of Bobby and of course, I'm good friends with all of them. Uh, uh, I'm happy EU people have been slandering EU for too long we're able to get two world finals in our bag right now so that's gonna be it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed again just absolutely insane and Gerald by the way is the go I absolutely love that guy a really really nice guy that's gonna be it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time